EPCO Educational Topic Number 7, Preventative Care and Health Maintenance. Obstetrician gynecologists develop substantial relationships with their patients through the lifespan, often taking care of women through their pregnancy or pregnancies and with gynecologic issues throughout their reproductive years and beyond. The annual health maintenance visit provides a great opportunity to counsel patients about maintaining a healthy lifestyle and minimizing health risks. The objectives of this video are to be able to counsel patients regarding the following and suggest appropriate referrals if necessary, contraception, intimate partner violence, prevention of sexually transmitted infections, immunizations, diet and nutrition, exercise, seatbelt use, stress management, sun exposure, depression, tobacco use, and alcohol and substance use. To explain prevention guidelines, including screening procedures for diseases of the following organ systems, breast, cervix, colon, cardiovascular, skin, and bone, and to identify risk factors in a patient's personal and family history for diseases of the following organ systems, breast, cervix, colon, cardiovascular, skin, and bone. There are many important aspects of maintaining a healthy lifestyle that are important to emphasize at an annual health maintenance visit. Diet and nutrition, exercise, seatbelt use, sun exposure, alcohol and substance use, tobacco, and depression. As women's health providers, we also need to think about contraception for any sexually active women of reproductive age, as well as screening for sexually transmitted infections. All health care providers need to also be more cognizant and deliberate in screening for intimate partner violence. Many of our reproductive age patients primarily see their gynecologist and develop substantive bonds with their providers. The obstetrician gynecologist can help provide resources such as nutritionists for obesity and diet counseling and social workers and support networks for women in high-risk environments. We will discuss risk factors and prevention guidelines in this video for the following organ systems, breast, cervix, colon, cardiovascular, skin, and bone. Breast cancer is the second most common malignancy in women and the second most common cause of cancer-related death in women. Age is the most significant risk factor. At the age of 20, a woman's risk of breast cancer is 1 out of 1760, at age 30 it is 1 out of 229, at 40 it's 1 out of 69, at 50 it's 1 out of 42, at 60 it's 1 out of 29, and at 70 it's 1 out of 27. A woman's lifetime risk of developing breast cancer is 1 out of 8. The second risk factor is family history and genetics. Having a first-degree relative with breast cancer puts a woman at higher risk as well as being a carrier for BRCA1 or 2. Components of the reproductive and menstrual history can also be risk factors, including early menarche before age 12, late menopause after 55, delayed childbearing or first child after 30, and nulliparity. Radiation exposure is an additional risk factor. Women who received significant radiation for Hodgkin's disease or an enlarged thymus gland are at increased risk of developing breast cancer, and women with dense breasts also are at increased risk of developing breast cancer. For breast cancer prevention guidelines, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends starting mammograms at age 40 and continuing to have them annually. The American Cancer Society has the same recommendations of age 40 and annually. The National Cancer Institute recommends starting at age 40 and having mammograms performed every one to two years. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends biannual mammograms starting at age 50 through age 74. Women should be informed of the benefits of mammography and the risks of additional imaging or biopsies that may be recommended based on screening results. We will now discuss colorectal cancer. It is the third leading cause of cancer death in women. It is diagnosed more in women than any individual gynecologic cancer. Screening tests are underused in many segments of the population. Risk factors include inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, family history of colorectal cancer or colorectal polyps, genetic syndromes such as familial adenomatous polyposis or hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. Other risk factors include lifestyle factors such as lack of regular physical activity, low fruit and vegetable intake, low fiber high fat diet, overweight and obesity, alcohol consumption, and tobacco use. ACOG recommends colorectal cancer screening for average age risk women beginning at age 50 and for African American women beginning at age 45 and recommends colonoscopy every 10 years as the most effective screening modality. Moving now to cervical cancer. 
The incidence of cervical cancer has decreased more than 50% in the past 30 years because of widespread screening. It continues to be more common worldwide, particularly in countries without screening programs. We'll begin by discussing cervical cancer risk factors. Most cervical cancer occurs in women who were either never screened or were inadequately screened. 50% of women diagnosed with cervical cancer have never had cervical cytology testing. An additional 10% of women had not been screened within 10 years of diagnosis. Other risk factors for cervical cancer include immunosuppression. There is a higher incidence of HPV infection and progression in HIV, organ transplant, and other immunosuppressed women, smoking, and early cordarchy. The screening guidelines are that pap tests should begin at age 21, and from age 21 to 30, cytology alone should be performed every three years, and from age 30 to 65, cytology plus HPV every five years is the preferred screening. Screening can stop after the age of 65 if she has not had any high-grade dysplasia for 20 years, and the HPV vaccine should be given to females from age 9 to 26. Moving now to bone health. Osteoporosis has a five times greater prevalence in women than in men, and women sustain 80% of hip fractures in the United States. Hip fractures are a significant source of morbidity and mortality. Of women older than 80 years old with a hip fracture, only 56% could walk independently after one year. And approximately 3 to 6% of women die of complications while hospitalized for a hip fracture. For risk factors for osteoporosis, Caucasian women have the highest rates of hip fracture and African American women have the lowest rates, increasing age and low body weight, personal history of fracture, family history of osteoporosis, excessive alcohol, and tobacco use. For prevention, it is important to address bone health in all age groups, including puberty and adolescence. Poor nutrition, including anorexia nervosa, inactive lifestyle, and smoking may prevent girls from reaching their peak bone mass. Screening for osteoporosis is with a DEXA scan of the lumbar, spine, and hip. It should begin at age 65. DEXA scans can be selectively used for women less than 65 if they have a medical history of a fragility fracture, if they weigh less than 127 pounds, they have a medical cause of bone loss, a parental history of a hip fracture, if they are a current smoker, if there is alcoholism, or if they have rheumatoid arthritis. Osteoporosis is diagnosed by the T-score, which is the number of standard deviations above or below the mean average bone density of young adult women. A normal T-score is greater than or equal to minus 1, low bone mass or osteopenia is between minus 1 and minus 2.5, and osteoporosis is when it's less than minus 2.5. Let's switch gears now and discuss skin cancer. The incidence of melanoma is increasing faster than any other potentially preventable cancer in the United States. Risk factors are familial, having atypical nevi, having a high nevus count, sun or UV exposure, and phenotypic traits of light skin pigmentation, having a red or blonde hair color, high density freckling, and a light eye color. When performing a skin examination of a lesion, look at the A for asymmetry, B for border irregularities, C for color variegation, D for a diameter greater than 6 millimeters, and E for enlargement or evolution of color change, shape, or symptoms. Our final topic is coronary heart disease. One out of five Americans have a high total cholesterol level. Abnormal cholesterol levels have been found to be associated with atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. Cholesterol levels that are checked are low-density lipoproteins, or LDL, high-density lipoproteins, or HDL, triglycerides, and total cholesterol levels. Dyslipidemia is diagnosed if there is a high LDL, triglyceride, or total cholesterol level, or a low HDL level. Initial screening for women should begin at age 45 and occur every five years unless she has risk factors for cardiovascular disease, and these risk factors include family history of familial hyperlipidemia, family history of premature cardiovascular disease, less than 50 for men and less than 60 for women, personal or family history of peripheral vascular disease, obesity, diabetes mellitus, or multiple cardiovascular risk factors, for example, tobacco use and hypertension. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommends starting cholesterol screening at age 45 for women who are at increased risk for coronary heart disease. This concludes the APCO video on preventative care and health maintenance. We have discussed the importance of the health maintenance visit, as well as talked about prevention guidelines and identified risk factors for breast, cervix, colon, cardiovascular, skin, and bone disorders. Music